Okay, so floor's open. Questions, points you'd like to make, or questions you'd like to ask. Oops, it's um, <laughs> <laughs> your own time. <laughs> 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 um, question for Nigel. Yeah, could you say who you are first? Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm Arifa Khan. Um, I run a company called Genius Incubator, which helps entrepreneurs raise capital. Uh, my question is um, about how government funded grants or co-angel investment funds and stuff work and how do we get access to those? Um, the, the, first of all, the, the angel co-fund is administered by Capital for Enterprise, which is uh, an, an arm's length part of the Department for Business Innovation and Skills. And that works through effectively doubling up the investment of angel syndicates. So the route into that is through the angel syndicate that is considering making an investment. So does one apply after you've got the angel financing in place? Or? No, as the angel syndicate is coming together to, to, to make an investment, they can apply to, uh, they need to be effectively accredited by, the, by Capital for Enterprise as, a, as eligible for funding through the angel co-fund and that will effectively double up their investment potential. Um, which is very helpful when, when we've heard that angels are looking to take their money forward through um, and, and not just do a little piece and then be replaced by venture capitalists. It's enabling them to do so follow-on the investments. Like? Uh, the angel syndicates, which, is, which are often put together by angel networks. Okay. Um, and in terms of grants from the Technology Strategy Board, um, absolutely go to our website, innovateuk.org, um, we do competitions, and, and Frank, for example, has mentioned ones around um, convergence that we're doing in the creative industries um, and, and, and as part of our digital program. Those are typically grants for collaborative research and development. Um, they're done according to, effectively according to our time scale and our scope. So we set the challenge and look for innovation that will address that challenge and will lead to business growth. Um, we also have the SMART program, um, which used to be called SMART way back when, when it was run by the um, regional development agencies, was renamed Grant for Research and Development, and since the demise of the RDAs is now run as a national program by the Technology Strategy Board, and that operates on the entrepreneur's time scale and according to the entrepreneur's scope in three areas around proof of market, proof of concept, and prototype or demonstrator. Those grants are for 50% or uh, approximately 50% of the project cost, um, and we will require um, the person to have a really good application. Um, about one in 10 um, of the applications for SMART awards are currently successful, um, and the entrepreneur needs to have the funding for their 50%. We won't just give money away into a black hole. Do you have any specifications on what industries, what kind of technology? For SMART, it's wide open. It just has to be research <coughs> and development. Um, and for our main programs, those <coughs> cover a wide variety of industries. OK. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Thanks for the service. <laughs> Hi, John Marshall from UK Trade and Investment. I'm responsible for digital media um, in this region. Uh, it was a fascinating event, so thank you very much for that. Um, I think the thing that struck me most was how, I would say this, but how little people are taking international perspective on a lot of their activities. And there's a, you know, it's understandable, I suppose, people are trying to get things away in the market they understand most and so on. But it is important to be cautious. I mean, there are, there are companies all around Europe whose job it is to, to, to see what's working elsewhere and to replicate it and then sell it. In Germany. So a lot of the companies pitching today were born global, so they should factor that <coughs> in to, um, to the activity. And UK trade investment can help them that way for small amounts of money. But I also want to raise a question of a debate that was beginning to get going around investment about venture capital versus government support and, and, and so on. I, first thing to say on that is that if you can avoid any engagement with government, then avoid it like plague like, like, because it will drive you crazy. And that applies to the EU media program as well, although there's money there. Um, the, the other aspect is that there seems to be a view, or, or, or there used to be a view, that if you couldn't get money from VCs, then you should get it from the government. Now, what that's saying basically is that government should, um, should accept more risk than VCs are going to, to accept, which doesn't really make sense to me uh, at, at all. And 
Um, I think the point about VCs is, unless there's market failure, which I don't think there is probably at the moment, but unless there's market failure, then the, 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 the job of the, um, the entrepreneur is to persuade the VC that their risk is as, is as low as possible. And um, the very good advice that we've all had on how to do that, I think, is, is very, um, very well spoken. So, so thanks you, uh, That's great. Do you have a specific question, or just that was the observation, really? Well, that is that observation, really, that you know the government isn't an alternative to, to, okay. to the market. Right. Other questions? Yeah. Can I please ask Nigel, how does this angel thing work? The angels, you talk to the angels, and they say, okay. Um, We'll give you £100,000 for 10% of your company. The angel network then applies to government to be accredited. Does that mean the angel network then only needs to give you £50,000 for 10% of your company because the government gives them with the 10%? Or how does it as It, it gives the opportunity for... It, it, I would say start with how much do you, does your business need? And if the business needs 200,000, then 100,000 will come from the angel syndicate and 100,000 will come from the angel co-fund. And, and they is the co-fund looking for a similar amount of equity? Absolutely, they? they invest on exactly the same terms. Right, so you start off with the overall amount. The yeah. angel network says we're not rich enough to do that. Yeah. But with government funding, we may be able to do it. Um, and is there any, any government vetting of each individual deal, or do they become accredited as a supplier of the funding under this scheme and make their own decisions? Um, the, they effectively become an accredited supplier through Capital for Enterprise. The Capital for Enterprise does have an investment committee which will have the final say on whether the Angel Co-Fund will co-invest with that Angel Syndicate or not. So they're not going to do bad deals, they're going to, they want to do good deals with people that they know so, so can I just clarify that? What you're really saying is there's a syndicate of angels, yep. and, and now we're talking about enlarging the syndicate by yep. adding a partner, which is uh, the finance arm that you just described, the co-fund, the, the co who will also make the decision. So they'll do their DD as appropriate or whatever. They should be able to place some reliance upon the due diligence okay. done by. It's, it's, it's very similar to the scheme that's been operating for some time in Scotland with the Scottish Investment Bank. Sorry, I'm not familiar with that. My question is simply, does this make the deal a longer process? Uh, it shouldn't do. Right. It will a bit, obviously, but it shouldn't make it material. So yes, it's yes. Yeah. A little, <laughs> inevitably, but for double the money, that's probably uh, something that I might live with. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Can, I, can I ask a question to the panel? Um, in, in respect to the kind of creativity that's emerging in this country, and we've talked a lot about the kind of infrastructure, where we're going, but each of you must have in your own minds some sort of idea about where we should be going, where the real big opportunities might lie, thoughts? <laughs> Do you want to start that, out, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, I'm... See, one of the frustrations I have is that I think I think the UK and Europe are as creative as the US, if not more so, particularly around television, particularly around media, and um, you know we, we've got to we've got to get an environment where that creativity drives value, long-term value, and we're not there yet. I don't think you know, a, I was looking I, just the amount of help that you get out you know in the valley. And the people go out there just because the environment is, is more, more stimulating. I don't know if you listened to Radio 4 this morning, but this ship is going to be moored 12 miles off the coast to get non-US non residents innovating within Silicon Valley. They've bought a ship that they're going to put 12 miles off the coast and they don't it's need a green Yeah, it's an entrepreneur ship. The entrepreneur <laughs> ship. <laughs> 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 But you know, what an indictment! <laughs> if you are a if you are a European or a UK technologist and you have to live in a ship twelve months off the twelve miles off the coast of uh, of Silicon Valley to create value, then we've got a problem. So I don't, you know, my my observation is I see as much good innovation here as I see in the US. I spend a lot of time in the US. What I don't see though is this the way of taking that innovation through all the way to realisation, both to exit, the right people are buying, private equity is buying, but corporates aren't particularly buying in Europe. So it's the exit to the bottom. We just, we've got to make sure that this 
is the hub again, and I think we've got the brains to make it the hub. Um, yeah, actually, I'm afraid I want to make two points. I'll make them quite quickly. Firstly, uh, I think we fail in teaching entrepreneurship at the most crucial stage of life, which is when we have with our kids. Um, our six-year-old kids are the most entrepreneurial people in the world. By the time they've left school at 18, we've beaten it out of them. Uh, and we then have to try and teach them again how to be entrepreneurial, how to to give them the confidence that they can come up and do things themselves. So what, sort of, what should we be encouraging people to do? Uh, I think we need to make them think not just about their specific idea, but we need to give them the ambition to think about big markets. So one of the things I do is, is teaching here at the university with young people is to get them to think, uh, as well as having their own ideas, just sit down and write out on a whiteboard the 10, 20 big market opportunities that you know are going to happen. And you know, I, I keep a list of them in my uh, sort of day book because people are always saying, oh, I can't think of anything to do. And, and actually, there are hundreds of things to do. And a great thing to do is to say, where is a big dynamic market that's happening now? And then use that to drive your creative powers. Uh, and you know, that makes people think big. And that will help whether it's in technology, creative industries, whatever it is. Anybody else on that? Yeah, I, can, I suppose, you know, my thinking is um, there is a lot of creativity around the internet now. It's very cool, you know, you, you know, I've got kids who are teenagers and, you know, there's a lot of thinking and a lot of playing with the internet. And, you know, I agree with Andrew, there's a lot of creativity in the UK and Europe. I think, I think it is true in the States that they're better at sort of bringing that together, whether that's in events or in conferences. I mean, one thing that we talked about recently was having a sort of a South by Southwest event here in the UK that could bring those kind of people together. And I think that is something that's uh, slightly missing here in the UK. So. Any other points from the panel? My only point would be that the rate of Andrew's chart of devices in the home is bring, is remind you of how technology is advancing most quickly in the consumer space that the children, teenagers are experiencing things way beyond what we experience. And when they get into the workplace and when they become customers, there's going to be expectations of how they interact with the world, which is maybe companies are going to struggle to do cost effectively. So I've got no idea what this means or what kind of companies um, would succeed, but there is something about gaming or the virtual environments and the experience that people get they're going to absolutely have to have in the workplace, unless they're not going to be engaged either with their employers or, the, or as customers. Um, question, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, I, was, I, was, I would encourage the creative industries to think about solving big problems, because where there are big problems there is money to be made. And I'd like to echo the gentleman's point there from UKTI. These need to be on a global basis. If you look on a global basis, the two big problems that need solving is healthcare and education. Uh, the lady who was here earlier from India there was going to the Open University, which is trying to work on a contract to educate a million school teachers in India. And they've already started issuing out tablets to teachers and things. I don't mean aspirin and the little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just being clear, there's a community that I have to see. So I think I think that your 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 capabilities, technical creative capabilities to educate people around the world. Look what happened to the Arab Spring. You know, big big issues around the world that need solving. Hundred million jobs in the next ten years. They're all knocking on the doors across the Mediterranean. Those are big issues. We might watch movies about them later, but we ought to solve the problems beforehand. I was going to say, in the gaming world, um, electronic arts um, used to invite young children from fourth, fifth, sixth grades to come in groups and try out their games and, and critique them. And uh, it's just a very small way of really engaging young people. Um, to be with them. Yeah? I think just, just touching on again about the, the young people, I think we're the youngest person here. Um, <laughs> I'll say, I'll say my thing. You know, I think kind of like I've been lied to my whole life. You know, go for education, go to university, or get some graduate job. And my generation came out and there weren't any jobs. And I've got hundreds of my friends two years after going to university still sat on the sofa not doing anything, and they weren't taught that 
entrepreneurial flair, get off your ass and do something. Um, luckily, I came out and kind of you know, kick-started myself while I was at university. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a changing environment. It's starting to change, but unless the education system changes, then we're going to have that generation of unemployed people who don't know what to do. And uh, or going to businesses that don't allow that sort of creative flexibility. So for example, I was um, I did an internship for Northern Rail in York, and the guys were going out of a five minute back break, which was basically five minutes not working. I didn't smoke, and I was like, well, can't I go five minutes on Facebook? So the, the computer <laughs> system won't let you log into Facebook. And I was like, well, I, I don't want to be engaged with your company then. You know? So it's just, yeah. as a young person, it's, 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 it's very eye-opening seeing all this and, and doing what I do as well. So thank you. So th there's a kind of final observation that I want to make because yeah. we said we'd finish at five. Yeah. We're running two minutes over. Um, for me, one of the key things that's coming through all this um, dialogue today is, in a sense, the difficulty of actually having this dialogue and curating this dialogue. When you think, you know, we, we, we had a format and a program that Frank and I thought of, which we said we'd have presentations. Uh, from people who were getting, who had a lot of experience talking, we can have SMEs. And <clears throat> if there's one thing that I'd really like to do is to say, we want to ensure that this dialogue continues. Uh, this is not just seen as an event that you went to. Um, and, and I actually wrote some notes earlier on, which uh, we didn't quite reach everybody. I was trying to say, you know, when you come to the event, the, the most important thing you need to do is to come and network and talk to people, exchange ideas, so you can continue a dialogue. Because you know, you look at you, Matt. You know, the ability to talk to people with lots of experience, just the fact that you can actually have the dialogue. Um, you know, for all the unemployed young graduates, giving them the the courage and the energy to say, you know, don't look for a job. You know, make your own job, yeah. create your own business. As that energy. And so, what we're going to do is put all this content up from this day online, and. What we really want to do is to try and create a mechanism for this dialogue to continue. So that if every one of you has a dialogue with 10 other people, then you know we're getting this amplification effect. If it just remains a closed thing, then we won't have been uh, as successful as we want to be. So I'm going to encourage you, you'll get an email with a summary, go on there, communicate, put ideas, thoughts up. But uh, if the only thing you do as a result of being here today is go and have another 10 dialogues, with people uh, to discuss big opportunities where you can take some of your technology ideas to solve big problems, then, then it, you know, it will have been worthwhile. So I've got to say thank you to all the panelists and thank you very much. We'll acknowledge them in the usual customary way. <laughs>